Hi guys, so we're here today to talk about return on investment. Uh, now this is a simple calculation, but something you really need um, if you want to, be, want to be doing property investing, especially if you're a sourcer. Uh, if you're passing on deals, investors really want to know what is their return on investment. So how do we calculate this and what is it? Return on investment very simply is out of how much money I'm putting in, how much am I getting back every year? Um, you'll see this when you go to a bank and you put money in a savings account, they'll tell you this APR or your interest rate. This is your return on investment. Usually half a percent, one percent, two percent, something like that. In property, we're looking for usually a minimum of 20% return on investment, if not more. Return on investment is a net calculation. Statistically speaking, it is a net. It works on net figures, not on gross. Yield is gross, return on investment is net. It's far more applicable really because I don't care how much money that I might be paying to the bank or, or, or this, that, or the other. I care about how much money I'm putting in, how much money I'm getting back out. The money that's going in and out of my bank account, that's what I care about. So how do we calculate it? Return on investment for a single let is very, very easy. It's how much money we're putting in. So traditionally speaking, it's 25% deposit. So say we're buying a house for 50,000 pounds. Your deposit is gonna be 12,500 pounds. What else are we gonna have? Stamp duty, stamp duty is about 3%, typically speaking. If it's more than 125 grand purchase, you'll pay 4% on that. Just look online or get yourself a stamp duty calculator. For a property like this, it's gonna be 1,500 pounds. On top of that, you're gonna to need to pay your solicitor's fees. Now, this is your conveyancing costs, typically speaking, about 1,000 pounds per property. They don't vary too much. I use 1,000 uh, pounds. The last two properties we bought, one came in at 970, then one came in at 1,060. So, we, we can work with a thousand pounds for the purpose of this. If you're working on bigger properties, sometimes it's easy just to use a nice round 4% of purchase price is gonna be your stamp duty and your legal fees. That's pretty much it for what's going out unless we're gonna put some money into refurb. So however much you're gonna put into refurbing the property or bring it up to standard, that's how much you're gonna add on. This is a bit more important when you come to looking at buy refurb refinance properties or developments. On top of this, you're gonna have broker fees, um, typically between 500 and a thousand pounds for, for small easy mortgages. Sometimes they're as little as a hundred pounds. Uh, depends on your broker and how good they are and, and what it is you're looking for them to do. Now, on a monthly basis, we've got rent coming into the property. So let's say um, the, the rent for this is 500 pounds a month. So that is, that is coming in your bank every month. However, you are gonna have some costs associated with that. So all my properties are managed. They're managed at about 10%, maybe 12% for an HMO. This is a single EP, so we're gonna use 10% for management costs. On top of that, we're also gonna have 10% for voids and maintenance. So that's another 50 pounds gone. So now we're at 400 pounds net. Uh, then your mortgage payments. Now your mortgage payments are the most complicated bit of maths you'll ever have to do in property investing. It's actually really easy. It's a 75% mortgage. That means that we're gonna have 37,500 pounds the bank is gonna lend us. We're gonna pay roughly 3%. They could be 2%, they could be 5%. It depends on the house, depends on you, depends on your lender. Typically speaking, between 3 and 4% is pretty average. So if we use 3%, your mortgage payments are going to be 3% times your £37,500, which is going to be £1,125 a year, which works out just less than £94 a month. So if we can take £94 off our initial £500, plus your 50 quid, plus your other 50 quid. That's your rent, your maintenance, your voids, and your management. You'll have some insurance costs and you have bills as well, depending on... Um, whether or not you're a, an HMO or a singer, um, and you'll have your insurance fees, which are about £10 a month. So after you've included all of that, you just add it up. So how much am I going to get in? £500 a month, less 100 for maintenance, management and voids, less, call it 100 for mortgages, we're down to £300, um, less your insurance. That means we are making £3,480 a year from our, from our property in terms of rent less all our ongoing costs. We have put down £12,500 for deposit, £1,500 for stamp duty, £1,000 for conveyancing costs, and £500 for our mortgage. Assuming the property was in good nick, um, that gives a grand total of £15,500 into this property. All we have to do now is take our annual uh, earnings, divide them by £15,500, that's 3480 over 15,500, times it by 100, and we end up with 22% return on the investment. And that is how you can get over 20% return on investment from a single let property. Most single lets, you can be looking between 40 and 60,000, and you'd be looking somewhere between 400 and 700 pound a month for rent. Um, if you can get a three bed for less than 50K, you're typically gonna be looking at a minimum of 20%. They tend to rent for about five, 550, uh, if you're looking in a good area. Um, there's some tips about finding them, but, this video is about doing your return investment uh, and it's always, always your money in divided by your money out. That will give you your, your return investment. It's the same for rent to SA, same for development projects, 
Uh, same for rent to rents, HMOs. It's just how much am I getting in every month? Times up by 12 to get your annual profit. Divided by how much money you've put into the deal to make it work in the first place. Um, and there's your return on investment. Something to remember if you're doing HMOs is that you cover all the bills. That's your council tax, the water, the sewage, the building's insurance, the Wi-Fi, the gas, the electric. You cover everything. Uh, you need to make sure you include those fees when you're looking at HMOs. You've also probably got licensing fees to contend with and you're going to have some form of refurb most likely to put in fire doors and fire alarms unless it's already licensed and tenanted um, and, and up to standard. So do make sure you include that when you're looking at HMOs. Make sure you've got everything going in and everything going out and then you'll be able to find out your ROI. Um, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers, thanks.